Welcome to today's session. In this session, I'll be taking you through fossil fuels. This is our last topic in Senior 3, and I'll be introducing to you in this topic, and this is led by Nili Mbibi Isaac. That is a telephone number that you can always use to reach out, and also for any inquiry, any question, you can always reach out. Now, let's look at what are fossil fuels? We're saying that fossil fuels are natural substances formed from decay of plants and animals millions of years ago. So we can see it is after a million of years that these fuels are formed. And the question is, what are these fuels? Do you know some examples of fossil fuels? Those substances formed after the decay of plants and animals after millions of years ago we are saying that they are formed under pressure and heat and actually they are carbon rich fuels that's why we normally call them carbon based fuels we can see they are coming from plants they are coming from animals and know very well that plants and animals they have a very big composition of a very big composition of carbon so they are carbon rich fuels then i believe this is one of the common fossil fuels that we know though we are going to look at more other fossil fuels but petroleum it comes from latin word petra which means lock and oleum which means oil and we shall be looking at more and more other examples of fossil fuels as we move on now, there's one thing that we need to note down here, that fossil fuels are non-renewable resources. This is one of the common questions that, uh, that is set under natural resources, and that is section, uh, section B, part 2, looking at natural resources. And we are looking at the category of these fossil fuels. We are saying they are non-renewable resources. Why? because they cannot be replenished easily. We have seen that they are formed after a million of years ago. Therefore, replenishing them, replacing them once they are used up, it becomes very hard. So therefore, that's why we call them uh, non-renewable resources. Let's look at uh, different types of fossil fuels that we have. You can be listing them down there if you know. What are some of the types of fossil fuels that you know? Number one, coal. Coal is a type of fossil fuel which is in solid and it is solid fuel at room temperature. Then we have number two, crude oil or petroleum that is a thick, dark liquid. Then we have natural gas, which is colorless gas, mainly methane. But other components of natural gas we have ethane, we have propane, we have butane. That's where we normally hear even this one, LPG, liquefied petroleum gas, which is part of the propane and butane. So the natural gas, the biggest percentage of natural gas is methane, but also it has other components like ethane, like propane and butane. So those are the three major types of fossil fuels that we have now we're saying that all of these are natural they are natural resources the coal the crude oil the natural gas they are all natural they are all energy sources they are all used as sources of energy and they are non-renewable why because they cannot easily be replenished we saw that now, what are some of the origins? We need to know how did they come about? How do they come about and how are they formed? Number one, coal is formed from remains of land plants and it is due to the process we call carbonization. That is coal. While crude oil and natural gas, for it is formed from sea plants and animals, coal mainly plants, but crude oil and natural gas mainly from sea plants and animals and there's something here to note that million of years of heat and pressure created on these fuels so it is created 
after a million of years, but due to effect of heat and pressure. So that is how they are formed in brief. Just that is a summary, not a detailed origin and formation, but it gives us a clear picture of how they are formed. Let's look at the composition of fossil fuel. The composition of fossil fuel, the composition of different substances is a key. We need to know what does this substance comprise of. Now we have three types of fossil fuels and we're going to see what each one of them contains. Now we're saying that mainly all fossil fuels are hydrocarbons. And we say the hydrocarbon is a substance which consists of mainly carbon and hydrogen. And for natural gas, it has carbon. Of course, all of them they have carbon and hydrogen because they are hydrocarbons. Now, for natural gas, it has carbon, hydrogen, and other gases like nitrogen, sulfur, oxygen. That is natural gas. Of course, the biggest percentage is carbon and hydrogen. Then petroleum, we are saying it has the same as natural gas, but it has an addition of some minerals. So it has carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur, oxygen, plus some minerals. Then coal is the same as petroleum, but it has a higher carbon content. It has a higher carbon content compared to uh, petroleum. Hope uh, the composition has been very clear and this won't fail you any more let's continue to the extraction now we want to know how uh, which methods we use to extract uh, these fossil fuels so i think that we have uh, different ways how the fossil fuels are extracted number one is through mining extraction of solid fossil fuels like coal is done through mining then underground Digging or surface scrapping also is the one that we normally use. Another one is called drilling. Extraction of oil and natural gas involves what? Drilling. Then coal is mainly through mining. So it uses, it uses drill bit to reach reservoirs and then oil stroke gas flow to the surface. That's what is happening especially in Hoima, where we discovered petroleum in Uganda. And therefore, such methods are being employed uh, to extract uh, such resources. What are some of the uses? Of course, these fossil fuels are not just there for nothing, nor they are very important. That's why you see uh, even the, the Ukraine and Russia world also, it has affected. It affected at one point during COVID, uh, COVID, there the supply of such fuels, and people were almost crying. Why? Because these are things that we use in our day-to-day -day life. For example, they help in generating electricity. Who is there and has never used electricity, either for printing or for studying, for any other personal use? So we see they are very important in generation of electricity number two transportation automobiles jets ships they all use these fuels and they help in transportation of goods and other very many things then number three cooking gas natural gas methane i believe most uh, these days uh, uh, gas is very common in different households homesteads and what is inside there methane gas what is inside there you'll find the lpg when you go to the petrol station what is all of that natural gas and therefore you see that is used you can see here uh, people frying uh, they are losting things they are losting and using the same fuels and also using heating homes and water especially it can be at home and also uh, heating water in the industries so we see all that very important uh, it is very important and you see that even the bioproducts the bioproducts of 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 uh, fossil fuels and their 
other uses of fossil fuels. Number one, we have plastics. These fossil fuels can be used in making of these plastics, paints, lubricants, tar. They are used as medicine such as aspirin. They are used as fertilizers. They are used as pesticides. They are also used in making detergents like soaps and also dyes. So you can see how very important our uh, our fossil fuels are to us, even medicines, even fertilizers. And yet you know very well that agriculture is a backbone. Everyone in Uganda at least is doing agriculture. Even outside there, many people, they depend on agriculture. Any food we eat is coming from agriculture. So we see how important yeah, these fossil fuels are. Now, though they are very important, they also have some problems they bring they have some issues they bring to the environment so here we look at problems and conservation now there's problems we have listed like two here like burning of these fossil fuels releases carbon dioxide we have seen that they already have carbon in them and therefore when we burn them in air they produce carbon dioxide which leads to global warming and thus climate change then coal contains some sulfur and nitrogen which are heavy pollutants you know very well sulfur when it reacts with oxygen it produces sulfuric uh, sulf uh, leads in the production of sulfur dioxide sulfur trioxide and all of these they contribute to acidic rain which is very dangerous then conservation there is need for sustainable use and renewable alternatives because we have seen all of these are non-renewable resources and therefore we say there is need there is need for other alternatives and which are renewable sustainability they see they take many millions of years so how can we sustain such which needs millions of years so that's why you say they need for sustainable use and renewable alternatives finally i want to give you a trial item a trial item this is an item that can come in a paper a standard paper of chemistry in section b part two it says one of the most important sources of energy in industries is coal it enhances industrial productivity and serves the community's needs however over dependence on coal has proven harmful to the environment hence a need to educate the community on mitigative measures there is a picture support material you have been recommended by your school to be part of the sensitization team to educate the community task make a write-up you would use let me find uh, your answers your responses in the other section for question and answer in that section for our discussion please make sure you put your responses there and also in the comment section drop it there and then we discuss what could be your response hope we we'll meet in our next session thanks for watching let's link up in our next session god bless